Welcome to the second part of this lecture in advanced machine element on bevel gears and worm gears. <clears throat> now we will be discussing bevel gears. And there are three main types of bevel gears. You have the straight bevel gears as shown here. You also have what is known as the spiral bevel gears where you have a spiral shape of the tooth and you also have the hypoid gears and all these three are different types of bevel gears um, for the straight and the spiral bevel gears uh, the axes they are non-parallel and coplanar uh, typically they are perpendicular the axis uh, but almost any angle between the axle are possible um, the axes they also intersect as shown right here where this axis intersects this one and the cone tip meaning if we create a cone like this and like this and the same thing here and here the tip of those two cones will coincide with the intersection of the axis when it comes to hypoid bevel, gear, bevel gears um, the axes are non-parallel and coplanar. Uh, typically the axes are perpendicular but again uh, almost any angle is possible. Uh, the axes they cross each other but the cone tips in this case they do not coincide. Um, for this to work uh, we require spiral gear teeth as shown right here for instance and the hypoid gear is stronger compared to a bevel gear for comparable ratio and diameter um, however there is a downside of this in this gear setup or the, this geometry results in more sliding between the the, the gear teeth uh, versus the other gear teeth um, which gives you a smoother operation but it also requires that you have more EP additives in your lubricant to prevent excessive wear, seizure, or other types of damage induced by the frictional heating which is a result of the um, sliding that occurs between the gears. <clears throat> Typical applications, I mean there are many many applications where you will find bevel gears for instance in power tools where you have a change in direction of the axis right here versus the axis of the motor driving this uh, power tool. Uh, also in automotive differentials you will find a hypoid gear uh, like in this one. This is the differential right here and you have the hypoid gear system right here with the pinion and the ring gear shown right there. Um, I will also give you quickly just a brush up on the geometry of a spur gear just so that you can keep this in mind when we go through the geometry of the bevel gear. Um, you have a number of uh, things that you should keep in mind or remember. You have the addendum and the didendum of the gear teeth, the face width which is the width of the gear tooth basically, the tooth thickness shown right here, um, you have the face and the flank shown here, this is known as the bottom land and you have the top land right here uh, and the clearance meaning if you would have a, another gear meshing with this one you have, would have a tooth coming down right here the clearance is this distance at the from the bottom land up to the basically the top land of the meshing gear and then you have the addendum circle at the top and you have the um, pitch circle shown right here and the circular pitch shown from this point to this point is the distance between two gear flanks you can say the distance between the gear teeth from one flank to the other now moving on to the bevel gears and the geometry delta as shown right here and right here uh, is called the pitch angle of the gear and the shaft angle, that is the angle between the two shafts that are 
uh, where each of the gears are mounted uh, is basically the sum of the two pitch angles as shown right here. You have this one and this one and this is a shaft angle. The gear ratio when you calculate that uh, you can calculate it using the pitch angles as per this expression or you can calculate it using the number of teeth you have Z2 divided by Z1. Um, using the shaft angle and the gear ratio that we saw on the previous page. The two pitch diameters can be calculated. You have the sum of the pitch angles right here and we have the radius times this uh, sinus for this angle and the same thing, the ratio between these equals the ratio between the, the number of teeth, Z1 over Z2. Now if we set this angle to 90 degrees, meaning that we have 90 degrees between the axes, uh, we'll get the expression as follows, where we have sinus for the pitch angle divided by sinus 90 minus the pitch angle, and this can be simplified down to tangents for the uh, pitch angle, which equals the uh, ratio between the two uh, number of teeth, Z1 over Z2. Um, the module of the gear can be calculated using this expression where we have uh, 2 pi times RE which is the um, length of the tooth sinus for the pitch angle we have pi times the module times Z and this can be rearranged to this expression. Um, in case that we have spiral shaped bevel gears, the two additional angles that we need to define this uh, uh, spiral shape, these angles are defined according to the figure shown here to your right. You have beta and you have beta e. And uh, beta e is then the equivalence to the helix angle of a helical gear. Um, for spiral bevel gears you typically also define a normal module um, as, as compared to the transversal module that we saw previously and the normal module is then defined as uh, the transversal module times cosine for beta e. Um, when it comes to correction factors um, the correction factors when it comes to bevel gears cannot vary as much as in the case for cylindrical gears like spur gears for instance because the gear tooth shape is not it doesn't have a perfect involute shape like the spur gear for instance and to achieve correct meshing and also to have even strength of the two teeth that are interacting during meshing of the gears the sum of the correction factors in a bevel gear have to be zero. So if you sum the two correction factors x1 for, for one gear and x2 for the other one, you have to have zero as the result. You can have a negative and the other one positive, and so on. But you cannot have both positive, for instance. Um, if we look at the geometry of the bevel gear, uh, there are a number of, of parameters shown here to your right which defines the geometry. Uh, you have a number of angles, you have the pitch angle, they are all shown down here. You have the pitch angle, you also have the face angle, you have the base cone angle and the root angle. Then there are some uh, length related to the cones. Uh, you have RE which the, is the cone length, the outer cone length and Ri, which is the cone length, the inner one, shown right here and right here. Um, Li and Le, they are the outer tip length and the crown to back. A, which is shown at the bottom here, that's the mounting depth of the gear, which may be interesting to know when you're designing your system to make sure that it fits into the space you have intended it to be in. Uh, B, the face width, 
is basically RE minus RI. A equals the transverse module, which is the addendum, and D is 1.2 ton times MT, and that's the dedendum. So those are the geometrical parameters that are used to define how the bevel gear actually look. Uh, the gear teeth geometry then, um, as you know in spur gears uh, we have involute shaped gear teeth, uh, but in the case of bevel gears we have something known as an octoid shaped gear teeth that closely approximate involute shape but not quite and that was also the reason for the uh, uh, condition related to the correction factors. And the octoid comes from the line of action that follows a more or less figure 8 pattern as you can see in the picture below where you have the pitch line right here uh, and you have this figure 8 pattern as described here. Um, since the geometry also varies along the gear tooth the tooth dimensions and the pitch diameters are reference to the outer end, also known as the heel or the big end of the gear. And basically a bevel gear can be defined by the modulus, uh, the press angle, the correction factor, the beta which relates to spiral gears and measured at the big end together with the pitch angle. So I thank you for your attention in this part of the lecture and I hope you will enjoy the next part dealing with more bevel gears.